everybody, Matt here from Matt's Movies, Music and More, coming to you this week with this week's movie review. This one isn't really a movie, again it's a documentary, very similar to a recent video that I posted on here which you need to check out. Um, this documentary is actually about music, it's the first time I'm actually talking about something to do with music, great. Because after all it is Matt's Movies, Music and More and I need to talk about music on this channel. Now... This film is called No Manifesto, a film about the Manic Street Preachers, a band from Wales who formed in 1986 with James Dean Bradfield, Nicky Wire, Sean Moore and Richie Edwards. And the movie is about their rise from early days up to the present day, which at the time this documentary came out, I think it might have been 2015. Um, but it really goes on about the fact that the Mannix were this sort of underground band with a cult following and it, it jumps back and forth into different timelines so it focuses on the band now talking about their past and present and some of the mistakes they may have made over their career and stuff like that because to many people the band sort of became in, in, the, um, in the zeitgeist I don't know if that's the right word to use here but they caught the public's attention really with the release of their album Generation Terrorists which came out in 1992 and um, it's most famous for having the single Motorcycle Emptiness which I think is an amazing song, really really good track and um, it also has um, some other tracks like You Love Us and um, Love Sweet Exile and Shortly after the release of that album, they released a song in 1992, which was a cover version of the theme from MASH called Suicide is Painless, which is actually not mentioned in this documentary, but they did that. But that helped them get their first sort of top 10 hit. And that was taken um, not from an album at all. In fact, that's a completely standalone track. But with the release of their next album, Gold Against Soul, um, that had hits like From Despair to Wear, and uh, La Trieste Dura, which is Scream to a Sigh, which I always loved. I always thought that was a really, really good song. And um, it wasn't until the 1994 album that came out, The Holy Bible, which a lot of people, because the song's lyrics were all written by Nicky Wire and Richie Edwards, and James Dean Bradfield and uh, Sean Moore, they, they wrote mostly the music because they were really the music guys in the band. Um, and so Richie wrote a lot of stuff and um, he's not the best guitarist and they say that in the documentary that he was not really the best guitarist but on the Holy Bible a lot of people say that that's one of the key albums that the Mannix did and at the time was their most successful album um, and shortly after the release of that album in 1995 I, uh, Richie Edwards um, disappeared and um, he was reported missing and to this day, no one knows what happened to him and he was declared dead, mm, must have been within the last 10 years, something like that, because obviously he'd been missing for such a long time. But what's weird about it is it's kind of a weird situation where the band, losing a key member in the band and now having to go, what do we do? Do we split? Do we stay together? That sort of thing. It showed that the Mannix were strong enough to work on some new material, maybe working on some of the stuff that they worked on with Richie and incorporating it into the new the new Manic Sound, which they did, which was in uh, 1996 with the release of A Design for Life. Um, a Design for Life for many people is the Manic Street Preacher's most important and probably the best song. I love A Design for Life. I thought when it came out, I just thought, this is amazing. What a great song. Um, so now the Manic's being a trio and the Manics released an album called Everything Must Go which had I think about five singles from them. I remember as a kid going into the local shops buying the singles of like A Design For Life, um, Everything Must Go, Australia uh, and Kevin Carter. I recall those songs um, being from that album um, and I, I loved it. It's an album I actually own to this day. I actually bought I think I might have bought the 10th anniversary edition on CD a number of years ago because I love the album. I think it's so good. Um, 
and I'm not the biggest Manix fan, but I like a lot of their material, especially the singles. I think the singles are great. And then in 1998, of course, they released the album This Is My Truth, Tell Me Yours, which is actually 20 years old this year. And I've heard a few mutters around on the internet that uh, Nicky Wire has hinted that this album might be getting a 20th anniversary deluxe edition coming at some point, which if so, that'd be great because this is the only album of Manic Street Preachers to go to number one. Um, and it also has the band's first number one single, which is If You Tolerate This, Your Children Will Be Next, which is a really underrated song. I really like that. And it's got songs in it like The Everlasting, You Stole the Sun From My Heart, Tsunami. They're, they're all great songs. I really, really like those tracks. Um, Tsunami especially and You Stole the Sun From My Heart. They're just really cool to sing along with. And obviously they had another number one which came um, in 2000, which was a song not from an album called The Masses Against the Classes, um, which is probably the weirdest number one I think I've ever heard. But it's actually a really, really cool track, really rocking, really hard. Um, I mean, I'm really sort of talking about the band's discography, really, because really this is a documentary about them. But it does talk about the fact that their follow up albums like Know Your Enemy um, and Lifebloods, especially Lifebloods, because Lifebloods has songs like Empty Souls and um, The Love of Richard Nixon, which apparently the band were not very happy about um, that particular song. They said it was too electronic. And yet I really like the song. I think it's really good. But they weren't particularly happy and it really charted badly. I think it got to like number 11 in the UK charts or something like that. It was a really low position. And then I think they released a song a few years later with Nina Pearson from the Cardigans, uh, which was called Your Love Is Not Enough. Um, it's a pretty average song. I'm not a big fan, but they're still releasing albums to this day. They've released a few greatest hits albums. Um, I mean, I've never seen them in concert. From what I've seen on YouTube, they sound pretty good live. Um, and I kind of like James Dean Bradford. I just think he's a really, really cool guy from the look of it. Um, they're very humble about the fact that they're from Wales. They love Wales. They think it's great. So they're kind of the national treasures of that um, of that country, obviously. Um, but the one thing it does mention on the documentary, which is kind of interesting, which I didn't know until I looked up on Wikipedia, is the fact that they never charted in America. Um, it's the one territory that they really struggled to um, to chart with because obviously um, Lur, Oasis, Radiohead, um, they've all done successfully well in America. And then it shows on the camera when um, they're talking to random music fans out there. They're like, have you heard of the Manic Street Preachers? And they were like, nah, sorry, that one passed me by or something like that. And they never had any success over there. They, they've toured over there and played gigs to many of their fans there. But in the UK, where they can play, you know, probably 1,500-seater uh, venues and above, you know, um, in, in the US, probably play to 500 people or something because it just, you know, the fans over there, there's, there's not really enough of them, to be honest. So it's a shame. But... I'm getting off topic. I mean, it's 2018 now. They've just released a new album called Resistance is Futile, which has done really well. I haven't heard any of the material yet. Um, but the documentary itself was filmed and released in 2015, around the time that they had released um, an album, which um, I forget what it's called, but it had them use some lyrics from um, Richie Edwards, um, and they wrote music to the, to the lyrics of his, so of his song. Um, so you have that. Um, is it a documentary worth seeing? If you're a Manic Street Preachers fan, definitely. If not, then it's probably something that you can probably give a miss. Um, but I mean, I, I'm biased because obviously I grew up in the 1990s. And I, I'm an 80s kid. I'm going to say that now. And hopefully if you guys remember, that'd be great. Because I'm, I'm a real 80s guy. And um, the fact that I grew up in the 1990s as a young teenager... Um, I, I fell in love with Britpop and the Manics were amongst the Britpop acts for me and um, they were a band that beyond 1997 with um, the fall of Britpop and all this dance music coming in and stuff the Manics were still going and they were making great music and great albums and that's why I really like their material and I know that they're not everyone's cup of tea but um, I think they're really good so I guess that's my review on No Manifesto. So 
Thank you very much for tuning in. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. And um, don't forget, I've got in the links in the descriptions here for the official Facebook, the YouTube, the Instagram, and the Twitter. And there's Patreon as well. So one day, if you guys want to help contribute to the channel and help me with ideas and stuff, that would be absolutely fantastic. So be sure to check out the next video. And as always, thank you very much for all your time and all the best.